Innovative learning technology helps you to master the knowledge of the facility's process system, to protect the environment, to increase revenue, to prevent accidents and assure the safety of all. The oil condensate enters the finger type slug catcher consisting of several sloped and flanged ends of long pieces of pipe. This type is simpler to design for high pressures which are often encountered in pipeline systems than the vessel type. A disadvantage is that its footprint can become excessively large. The separator slug catcher consists of distribution headers, separation chambers, dry gas risers, storage harps, liquids, and sludge manifolds. The two-phase flow of gas and liquids in the pipelines operates as slug flow regime. Due to the gravity, liquids will tend to settle on the bottom, while the gases occupy the top section of the pipeline. The slug catcher is a vessel with sufficient buffer volume to store the largest slugs expected from the upstream system. It is located at the entrance of the processing facility. The buffered liquids can be drained to the processing equipment at a much slower rate to prevent overloading the system. As slugs are a periodical phenomenon, the slug catcher should be emptied before the next slug arrives. The distribution manifold takes the incoming gas liquid stream, slows it down and splits it into several smaller streams to allow uniform flow and activates the gas liquid separation. The length, size and number of these chambers are a combined function of gas flow, gas chemistry and other known conditions. The primary function of the dry gas risers is to deliver dry gas back into the system. The storage hops hold the liquids at line pressure, and the number and length of these hops is determined by the storage requirements, slug size, and residence time. The liquid and sludge manifolds provide separation of the water, oil, and debris. Level controls are installed, including a vent line from a level column near the liquid manifold to the gas out manifold. If liquid particles smaller than 50 microns are to be removed from the gas stream, separator elements or scrubbers can be added to the dry gas manifold or downstream of the slug catcher. The gas condensate passes into the separator vessel type slug catcher. The produced water is sent for treatment prior to well injection. The oil transfers to the condensate separator and the gas passes through the demisters to feed the gas booster compressors. The inlet separator's produced water joins the header for treatment. The gas is collected toward the gas booster compressor and the oil is preheated prior to entering the high pressure separator for further processing. The desalting phase. The fluid mixture of hydrocarbon gases, hydrocarbon liquid, and water enter the inlet section of the three phase separator designed with baffles to improve the separation efficiency by increasing the total path length. Efficient design, easy construction and simple operation forms the basis of this separation technique. Heat and chemical treatments are applied to improve the reaction kinetics and enhance the sedimentation rate. Water in the crude oil is salty. Two-stage electrostatic desalters are used to eliminate problems resulting from the presence of salted minerals. Salts deposit chlorides in the processing equipment and cause fouling effects. 
The oil entering the desalter is distributed by means of an inverted bottom pan and passes through the layer of separated water where it is washed. A pulsating high voltage electrostatic The condensate hydrocarbon liquid incoming from the desalter is under high pressure with absorbed gases. The vapor pressure of the condensate is lowered by heating and flash vaporization steps called condensate stabilization. The progressive lowering of pressure activates the separation of the light components. To meet the final specification, a trade stabilizer column is used to remove light gas components such as methane and ethane. The stabilized condensate is fed to the depropionizer and debutanizer system while the light gases join the inlet associated gas. The process involves the following steps. The condensate enters at an elevated temperature and pressure into the stabilizer column, operating under conditions that effectively separate the condensate into a liquid portion, comprising the NC4 hydrocarbons and a gaseous portion having CO2 and normally gaseous hydrocarbons. Liquid exiting from the column side enters a hot oil heated kettle type reboiler and returns to lower level of the stabilizer to activate the separation. The light hydrocarbon products are evaporated. This action is called stripping. The liquid withdrawn from the bottom section is controlled to warm up the condensate, entering the stabilizer via the feed heater recovery unit or diverted to the condensate flash heater downstream of the process operation. The oil from the condensate flash heater joins the stream toward the high pressure separator. The flashed gas is air cooled and restabilized to improve its purity prior to storage and export. The produced vapor phase is sent to gas recovery unit or to the flare. The overhead vapor is flashed and condensed in the reflux drum to return saturated into the stabilizer's upper part. The condensed hydrated liquid is sent to water treatment plant to reduce the contaminants before discharge or 
directed to the oil well injection system. Instrument controls are installed around the feed inlet to monitor the column performance. Gas exiting from the top of the stabilizer column is directed to associated gas inlet cooler for liquefaction. Flaring is the disposal of waste gases by burning. Historically, gases are discharged to atmosphere and pollutes drastically. Dry gas normally burns through vertical stack, while wet gas is streamed horizontally into a water tank or to an in-ground pit prepared for this purpose. The flare should be installed downwind of the process facility, away from people, to prevent damage caused by open flame. The spacing, orientation and height of the flares shall be determined by a full assessment of the heat radiation, noise and wind direction. At the tip of the flare, the gas mixes with air. A heat source ignites the mixture. The flame forms, carrying away the effluent until all are fully burned. Received medium gas oil is preheated and mixed with hydrogen-rich recycled gas to enter the top catalyst bed of first reactants. Contaminants such as silicon, metals, olefins and mercaptans are eliminated. Sulfur, nitrogen and breakthrough olefins are reduced to acceptable levels in second and third beds of the reactors. High hydrogen partial pressure is required to promote the catalytic diffusion between hydrogen and oil molecules. This reaction is exothermic. Cold recycled gas is injected between the beds to control the reactor temperature, which prevents the polymerization and raises the catalyst longevity. The effluent is cooled in heat exchangers steam generators and air coolers. Wash water is injected upstream of the air coolers to prevent corrosion and fouling due to formation of salts. Hydrocarbon liquid, sour water and dissolved light ends are separated from hydrogen-rich recycled gas in three-phase cold high-pressure separators. Sour water and sour gas are routed to an outside stripping unit for further treatment. The hydrogen sulfide is removed from the vapor in the amine absorber column. The clean gas and makeup hydrogen are compressed to return into the reactants. Liquid from cold low pressure separator is mixed and preheated with oil from hot low pressure separator prior to entering the stabilizer. The vapor phase is sent to gas recovery unit or to the flare. The light products are evaporated by steam stripping from the liquid in the bottom section. The overhead vapor is air-cooled, flashed, and condensed in the reflux drum to return saturated into the stabilizer's upper part. Instrument controls are installed around the feed inlet to monitor the column performance. Stabilizing the oil is removing light hydrocarbons or olefins to meet the flash point specification. Once the oil specifications are met, the product is cooled and pumped for shipment to the refinery. The separator slug catcher consists of distribution headers, 
separation chambers, dry gas risers, storage hops, liquids, and sludge manifolds. The two-phase flow of gas and liquids in the pipelines operates as slug flow regime. Due to the gravity, liquids will tend to settle on the bottom, while the gases occupy the top section of the pipeline. The slug catcher is a vessel with sufficient buffer volume to store the largest slugs expected from the upstream system. It is located at the entrance of the processing facility. The buffered liquids can be drained to the processing equipment at a much slower rate to prevent overloading the system. As slugs are a periodical phenomenon, the slug catcher should be emptied before the next slug arrives. The distribution manifold takes the incoming gas liquid stream, slows it down, and splits it into several smaller streams to allow uniform flow and activates the gas liquid separation. The length, size, and number of these chambers are a combined function of gas flow, gas chemistry, and other known conditions. The primary function of the dry gas risers is to deliver dry gas back into the system. The storage hops hold the liquids at line pressure, and the number and length of these hops is determined by the storage requirements, slug size, and residence time. The liquid and sludge manifolds provide separation of the water, oil, and debris. Level controls are installed, including a vent line from a level column near the liquid manifold to the gas out manifold. If liquid particles smaller than 50 microns are to be removed from the gas stream, separator elements or scrubbers can be added to the dry gas manifold or downstream of the slug catcher. 